Oh, that's fish. That's fish. Fish, 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 fish. We go real. Don't pull it out. Real. There you go. Welcome everybody to another PNW Best Life video. In this episode, we're gonna take you through some blackmouth fishing, winter Chinook opportunity, uh, Marine Area 10, Puget Sound. We were fishing near Kingston specifically, and we got it done with our limits. We don't want to share how we got it done, what, what uh, how our day went, kind of how it all went down. We first showed up at the boat launch at Kingston. Uh, there was no one there. You know, we got we got wind driving rain, uh, the flag was straight, the white, there were white caps in the bay. We were like, are, are we the only idiots who didn't get the memo? Like, should we be out here? You know, um, you know, with the new boat, the North River, uh, Seahawk, 23 foot, uh, you know, with the deeper V and offshore platform, all these things, like, I feel way more confident being out there than when I, when I had the, uh, the, you know, what essentially was the jet sled. Uh, taking on some of these conditions so I, I, I was like but still when you're the only one there and you've got weather like this and it's like gusting up to 25 I'm looking at my I'm looking at Ash I'm looking at my buddy going dude should, should we be out here <clears throat> so we took our time you know uh, getting the boat in the water getting getting underway launching and getting gear prepped and stuff and we were the only ones there. like we, were set, we sat there for probably half an hour uh, and no one else showed up so we're like all right this day is either gonna go real bad or real good because uh, there won't be many people on the water uh, to compete with for uh, for those snappy, bitey fish. There's uh, Northwest Fishing, Northwest Fishing Charter. Yep. We got out there and it was it was it was bad. Like initially, like uh, we had we had issues trolling into the wind. We had uh, big wind waves and just chop and just bouncing around out there. And I, of course, you know, I'm using bait on my rod, and I'm like, dude. I'm violating my own personal rule here, which is don't use bait in bad weather, you know, like you're sitting there, you know, your, your flasher's blowing in the wind, spinning like a million miles an hour, and, and you're trying to put, you know, set that down, get that stable, and then put, put an anchovy in a teaser head, you're going, dude, <laughs> what was I thinking? This is not a great idea. Uh, so we were making several trolls uh, on the north-south line. Wind was coming from the south-southeast which really gives, Kingston's usually a nice spot to troll because you get protection from a lot of different locations, but not with a south-southeast uh, below, <clears throat> there's almost no protection. So we were, we were uh, on the inside shelf uh, around Kingston, we were trolling south to north and then we'd run back. Uh, there was a couple charters out there, it was the only other boats out there, and they were uh, trolling east to west. I think it's because you, you wouldn't have to pick up and run doing that. And so we could have just gotten in line with them, but we wanted to cover some different water. Um, and we actually got both of our keepers where the charters weren't uh, weren't trolling. Although I saw pictures later that they got uh, they limited it out too. So or at least one of them did. I think the other one was still struggling. But, but yeah, there's uh, it, you know overall it was a good trip. And, and, and the the weather really laid down, like really calmed down after a little while. I like this weather better. Uh, yeah, it's a little uh, calmer, huh? Yeah. Um, and turned into a really nice day on the water. Did you hit bottom? Sweet. Uh, yeah, I just saw I just saw these guys swimming in this area. They may have swam past, but I'm pretty sure I'm going over the same spot again. <clears throat> well, as calm as it is, we could go down to Jeff Head and troll too if we wanted. Man, they're picking up fish here, so what's that saying? Don't leave fish behind you. Yeah. I haven't seen anyone pick up a uh, confirmed keeper though. That's a fish. That's a fish. Fish, 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 fish. You go real. Don't pull it out. Real. There you go. Oh, yeah. Right. What do we say about leaving? If Don't he wants leave. to run, you know, you can always let him, let him, uh, Okay, all right. Let me go broadside over here. Yep. Take grid.
Yep. That's closer. That actually might be. Ooh, I bet so it's straight. See, that's 22 right there. Your hand in the way. Oh, zero. Zero is right, right there, yeah. Yeah, it's 22 and a half. It's 22 and a half. It's a uh, hatchery, so yeah. Yeah, coming on board. So the lead box. Yeah, the fir first keeper uh, we <clears throat> we pulled in was like, all right, this is pretty obviously like a measurable fish. Turned out to be 23 inches, hatchery fish, uh, just nice, uh, n nice healthy fillets off of there, you know, that we were able to, to, to harvest. And then the next fish, I don't know why, but I, I was, I don't know what, I was brain fogged or something. But I brought in like the second keeper and I was, I was bringing it into the boat and I'm like, dude, I'm just gonna release this fish. It's, it's, and Ash is like, dude, I, I think we should, I think we should measure it. I think it's close. I'm like, ah, I don't know. Measure it, it's, it's, it's like a carbon, you know, you throw it on the boat and bonk it. It's 23 inches, it's like the exact same fish. I, I was about to release it, I just kind of bring it in. I was like, oh eh, yeah, I'll just, you know, ugh. If it gets off, it gets off. So we were done, we were off the water. Um, turned out to be pretty awesome. Uh, all right, we, uh, I didn't want to turn this far because it took the pressure off the fish. It's all right. I can't tell if it's on or not still, I don't think it is, but. One of the challenges with fishing for blackmouth is keeping undersized sublegals off your line. And for us, you know, that meant using a little bit larger profile. We actually ended up getting all of our bites on the anchovy in the herring aid teaser head behind the blue flasher. Yeah. Yeah. Put the clip, put the yeah, it's down. just where the, uh, the other thing I'm doing is just making sure that the hook goes kind of in the right spot so that it, you don't need to like give it any bend, so I don't know, I put it like right here. And then mm, just enough that it pulls the yep. slack. Yep, let's make sure it's uh, spinning. Does it look like it's spinning right? The anchovy. Give it a roll. Yeah, good. I like fl uh, flasher colors like blue, purple, uh, because they uh, they're just gonna show up in deeper water better than like your greens, yellows, reds that you might use more during the summer, <clears throat> summertime. Uh, having a glow approach is important when you got no sun for that UV uh, to really shine. Um, so we had, you know, we had, um, you know, the, the, the uh, you know, ha one of the flasher sides is, is, is a glow um, and, and the other's UV. But, but yeah, so we were, we were fishing in probably 80 to 95 feet of water <clears throat> most of the time. And we're just dropping it all the way to the bottom, 15 pound downrigger balls, and we just drop all the way to the bottom, come up a foot, and try to stay near that bottom. That's a lot of times you're not marking a ton of fish, on, although we did mark a few, um, but you want to stay near the bottom and have the best chance of, of, of getting bit. That's why you gotta like, um, that's why you gotta do it so quickly with the green button. To see if it keeps going. Because you gotta, yeah, because if they don't have much fight in them, and then you find out that, like, you know. If you wait too long, then they're done fighting, and and you're gonna think, oh, it was just the bottom, and he was probably in there for. I'll bet you that first time was that was probably was him. him. So that was a long time. Ago. That was. <laughs> when you're there, um, we, a lot of times we will get we're gonna bite. We're not sure like is that the bottom or not, and it's like you know we try to hit that green button, bring bring the you know on the on the Scotty and bring bring it up a few feet. Reel out the slack, and if it still bounces, like all right, that's a bite. Let's 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 reel that off and and uh, and fight that fish and bring that fish in. So, uh, <clears throat> it's a pretty simple fishery, uh, pretty easy to get it done, easy to get out there if you've got the right weather window and you got the right gear and you're you're off the bottom and you put the time in. You're gonna get you're gonna get fish, and this season it seems like uh, you're gonna get keepers. So. That's pretty awesome. Definitely worth getting out there doing that again. So, so the fishery opened on January 1st, 2022, and we're supposed to be open three days a week, Saturday to Monday, you know, uh, until the season ended and, uh, and, you know, hopefully it would go longer. Typically it ends up closing sometime in January, uh, middle of January, because we hit the encounter right away. A lot of that is 
because in, in January there's a lot of smaller fish, sublegals, swimming around and you try to you sit there all day trying to get your limit, you might hit 10, 15 sublegals without getting a keeper. Now you're grinding through that quota, right? And and you get into um, you, the, the fishery closes early almost every, I mean, that's just what happens every year. So uh, unfortunately, uh, we just got the, I mean, it's January 14th right now and just found out it's gonna close early, uh, but but the, the closure is supposed to only be temporary because, uh, and, and this is coming from a, a, a wreck fish advisory board, so these, these folks represent us in the sport angling community, and they, they wanted to open later in uh, February or March, I'm assuming, because uh, you have bigger fish, better weather, etc. Personally, I hope it opens in February. I have a lot to do in March, and uh, I don't need it. I don't need it. I need it to fish in February, not in March, when uh, when there's you know on my calendar that I got less stuff going on. So in March, we're gonna have ocean bottom fishing open. We're gonna have Columbia River um, trips, uh, steelhead return, Columbia River springers. I mean, there's gonna be some things to do in March, um, and, I, and CQ blackmouth. I mean, I probably uh, it'll be harder to get out Marine Area 10. Of course, they may look at that and go, if we open in March and there's all this co competition for other opportunities, then, uh, then then that's what they want to open it for. So it'll go all March for guys who have their boats in the water and people down and they just want to just want to go out and go fish for blackmouth, uh, you know, during the weekend or whatever. So so we'll see. Uh, fingers crossed there. We will get another opportunity. We did not hit the quotas. Um, we're like 25%, 45%, meaning which metric you're looking at. So here we go. Yeah. <clears throat> Hope to see you out there. Until next time, good luck, tight line, stay safe.